Hey, day 69, kind of a weird one. Um, on the house floor today, we saw House Bill 213 rear its ugly head again. This is the one that gives tax credits um, for parents who want to pay for private schools. And we had it back from appropriations because they amended it down to only inc include parents and grandparents. And it passed. Um, we saw the first of, I think, many legislative referendums today. This one was um, House Bill 423, which is literally the same exact wording of a bad sex ed bill that we heard earlier in the session that passed but hasn't been signed by the governor yet. And so Carrie Smith, the sponsor of the bill, just thought that he would go ahead and put a legislative referenda onto the House floor just in case his other bill doesn't pass. So this is the one that says that um, parents have to opt in in to sex ed at schools. Right now, if, um, if a parent does not want their child to receive whatever sex ed is happening at the school, or really anything for that matter, they can sign a note saying, I don't want my kid to, to hear that lesson. And their child doesn't hear that lesson. And this bill completely flips that on its head and um, basically takes local control away from school boards. Right now, school boards get to decide in each community what the rules are for opting in or opting out for any program um, at their schools. And this bill says school boards don't get to do that anymore. So um, we're going to see a lot of these leg legislative referendums. And the problem with them is that it's our job to decide this stuff. That's what we're elected for. That is what the legislature does. And so if you don't get your way, you can stomp and throw a huge fit and pass it on as legislative referenda and then say, oh, well, we should really let the voters decide on this, which sounds great, except for the fact that it's going to cost each county about $40,000 just to put this on their ballot. And it's something that the people elected us to decide when we represent them. And so if we are representing our constituents, then case closed. The people have decided already and it didn't cost each county $40,000 extra dollars. And it's really funny because we had a bill in local government earlier in the session that said, hey, if you're going to pass stuff on and not do your job, then the state should pay the county the cost of putting this on the ballot. And the Republicans voted no. They said, no, the counties can pay for this themselves. And this is not passing the buck. Um, Representative Schreiner said, you know, some kids, he was talking about that not all kids have parents that pay attention and fill out forms in the same way that others do. And he said, you know, we, some kids live in cars. And if you want to see some entertainment, you could go back and watch the video of the floor session when Representative Schreiner said that because the Republicans were laughing at him. They were looking at each other and being like, ha ha, this guy thinks that there's people who live in cars. And um, wouldn't it be great to live in a world where you don't think anyone actually lives in their car? Unfortunately, as a teacher, I have taught kids who have lived in their car before how out of touch can you be? I was, I felt ashamed for them that they're looking around and laughing that someone thinks that there are poor people. Um, Senate Joint Resolution 18 is a resolution that says we have to send a clear message to Congress to lower the federal deficit spending and reduce the debt. Yeah, everybody agrees with that. But the sponsor of the bill, the, car the House carrier who stood up for the Senate sponsor, um, said our... Uh, our debt compared to GDP is 187%. That was true probably a couple months ago when the senator wrote the bill. But if you Google our, our debt to GDP ratio, we are on track to be at 75%. So the sponsor of the bill is trying to have this doom and gloom fear that our country's economy is worse than Greece's economy. And that is just absolutely not true. And I will not stand for fear mongering or just lies anymore. And so I stood up and said, 
I don't know when the senator wrote this bill, but we are actually on track. The economy is improving, and the projection says that shortly our debt will be 75% of our gross domestic product. And um, when the sponsor, the carrier of the bill, made his closing remarks, he did not dispute that. Um, it's just true. And there was even a little bit of a drama where he was crying for his nieces and nephews because they're going to inherit this debt. It's bull. And that's the nice word for it. Um, and I'm not making this up. This is like science and mathematics. It's arithmetic folks. Um, and then the weirdness continued in Human Services Committee this afternoon, where there was a completely bipartisan bill. It had like four Republicans and four Democrats names at the top of it. It came out of an interim study committee, and it said that the Medicaid applications for the state should be online. And it also said that they should only be able to ask for the bare minimum information that is required to make an eligibility determination. It was a great bill, and um, Representative Smith on the Human Services Committee was so worried that this bill could potentially be used by the governor to sneak in Medicaid expansion, which all of Montana wants. He made some kind of BS amendment to amend the title of the bill. So there's this rule that if it fits under the title of the bill, then you can completely strike the words of the bill and do whatever you want as long as it fits under the title. That's why you see really, really broad titles of bills like generally revise. Well, this one said generally revise Medicaid eligibility determination requirements or something like that. And no one had thought about using this as a vehicle for Medicaid expansion. We brought our bills for Medicaid expansion. The people said that they wanted them and the House voted them down because they believe in bumper sticker ideology that no one else in the state agrees with. And so uh, Representative Smith brought an amendment that completely cut out about half the title of the bill. And he said that he wanted to make sure that the governor didn't amend in anything in the Senate, because if Governor Bullock did amend in Medicaid expansion into this bill, there would not be 66 or yeah, 66 votes in the House to override that amendment. And that's not at all what was happening with this bill. And so now the Medicaid application system is not going to get fixed because the representatives and human services were so afraid that Montanans might get something that they want. That's weird and wrong. I voted no on the first seven bills in a row today, and that is definitely the first time that's happened. And I'm wondering if that's going to be an indication of how the rest of the session is going to go. In fact, I voted no on eight out of 11 bills today. Um, I'll be glad when this is over. Thanks so much for all of your support. Remember, we, you and I, and people who vote, totally control who sits in these seats and makes these decisions for us. And I hope everyone out there is inspired to help on campaigns from now until the next election. Have a great night.